اهلا بكم Today I will complete what I said in the previous episode regarding how to describe a fracture. I will give you some examples of different fractures to see how to describe it as we mentioned. In the last episode we mentioned that fractures are described according to the direction of the fracture line either transverse, oblique, longitudinal or spiral and according to either simple, I mean two pieces or comminuted more than two bone fragments and according to the relationship of fragments either angulated, displaced, shortening or rotation and according to the relation to the adjacent joint either intra-articular or extra-articular Starting with case number one there is complete, I mean involves both sides of the cortex transverse simple, I mean only two bone fragments complete, transverse Simple fracture involving the shaft of the left radius. Of course, extra articular because it's away from the joint. Showing lateral displacement because in cases of displacement, we describe according to the distal bone fragment, not the proximal bone fragment. And here, there is offset of the distal bone fragment laterally. So there is lateral displacement. And there is also median and posterior angulation. And also in angulation, we describe according to the distal bone fragment. Look at the distal end of the distal bone fragment. If the distal end of the distal bone fragment moved laterally, it will be lateral angulation. And if moved medially, it will be medial angulation. So here there is medial and posterior angulation because the distal part of the distal bone fragment moved medially and posteriorly. And also there is mild shortening, you can appreciate it in the lateral projection. As you see here, there is some overlapping of the ends of the fracture uh, fragments. So the proper uh, description is complete, transverse, simple fracture of the shaft of the left radius, extra articular showing lateral displacement, medial and posterior angulation as well as mild shortening. Case number two. There is complete, oblique, simple fracture of the distal end of the middle phalanx of the fourth finger. Intra-articular, as you see, the fracture line is reaching the articular surface. No significant displacement or angulation or shortening could be appreciated. Case number three. Complete, transverse, simple fracture of the mid-shaft of the fifth metacarpal bone of the right hand, of course extra articular, associated with medial or lateral angulation, it is lateral angulation, because the distal part of the distal bone fragment moved laterally, moved laterally, but no displacement could be appreciated as there is no offset of the both fractured bone ends. Case number four. Complete comminuted fracture of the mid shaft of the left clavicle associated with some shortening as there is overlap of the fractured ends and there is a downward or upward displacement here. Of course, there is downward displacement because we describe the displacement of the distal bone fragment. Case number five incomplete fracture because it involves only part of the cortex not reaching to the other side. Involving the shaft of the right ulna and radius. So it is incomplete, oblique, simple fracture associated with posterior angulation. This is what is known as green stick fracture. Case number six. This is one of the easily missed fractures, which is torus fracture. Usually very difficult to be appreciated in the frontal projection and better to be detected in the lateral projection in the form of angulation or bulging of the cortex as you see. It is incomplete fracture and also known as buckling fracture. The last example is case number seven. Complete, oblique, simple or comminuted. It is comminuted fracture because there are more than two bone fragments. There is very small fragment here. So there is 
complete oblique comminuted fraction of the mid shaft of the left humerus with significant shortening as well as medial angulation because the distal bone fragments angulated medially and there is lateral displacement is seen as there is lateral offset of the distal bone fragment also and also there is rotation here look at the shoulder joint the humeral head looks like to be projected laterally while the elbow joint is projected in anteroposterior position as you see so there is rotation so there is complete oblique comminuted fracture of the mid shaft of left humerus associated with rotation shortening medial angulation and lateral displacement i think we cover everything regarding how to describe a fracture with some demonstrative examples see you inshallah in next episode Thank you very much.